All right, welcome back. And today we are going to talk about data types and operators. Uh, first, we're going to be talking about these different data types that most languages have. Now, we call these primitive data types. So primitive data types are the simplest data types and are shared across many programming languages. And in our Python case, um, there's a lot more than just these, but these are like the, the simple ones that we'll think about first, okay? So here what we have is we have numbers, strings, and Boolean. Those are the three data types that we will care about. Why are there different data types? Well, different data types is basically categorizing information, right? It's a way for the computer to distinguish different types of input. So numbers are these numbers that you can see over here, strings, are like strings of characters, usually like words, text, and stuff like that. Those are strings. And Boolean is literally just true or false. So that's pretty simple, right? Now for each one of these data types, they have different characteristics and different operators that you can use on them. So what are operators? Operators are basically functions that you can call on these data types. For example, if you think about numbers, you can square numbers. For example, if we want to square 3, then it becomes 9. And then if you want to square 12, or negative 12, it becomes 144, right? We can add numbers, we can subtract them. But if you square a string, that doesn't really make any sense, right? You can't really square a string. So that's why numbers and strings are different. And then Boolean too, squaring doesn't really make any sense unless you define saying like, okay, if I say false would be zero and true would be one, then if we square true, it's one. And if we square zero, it's still zero. So it doesn't do anything, right? But let's not, let's not think about this. So basically numbers, strings, and Boolean. It's like com you can't really compare numbers and strings and Boolean, right? You have to do these operations on the same thing usually. So it's like apples and oranges and cherries, where booleans are cherries. We talked about operators and functions. Let's talk about operators now. What are operators? So operators are things that you can do between these data types. So for example, uh, you can do six divided by three. This is an operator. It's the division operator. It's an arithmetic operator, right? So then six plus three, these are also operators. Now, numbers are great because you can use them to make calculations. You can't really add strings, right? For example, hello, and then if you add sup, then it doesn't necessarily mean the same thing as the numbers. We'll get into that soon later. But for now, we'll talk about other operations. There's also six minus three, the minus operator. You know, you know what that does, it subtracts. You know, you got multiplication, which is defined by the star. And then you also have maybe modulo, which is kind of the opposite of division, where the division, you get the quotient, and the modulo, you get the remainder. So this should be like a zero. These are what we call arithmetic operators. We also have something called comparison operator. And you should know these. These are smaller than, greater than, equal, smaller than or equal, bigger or equal. These are comparison operators, and the output is actually a Boolean, which we will talk about now. So you see numbers, if you add them together, they become another number. If you do like six, is it smaller than three? That's a no, you're gonna get something called a Boolean. You're gonna get either true or false. And in here, you'll get false. So what are the operators for Boolean? The most common ones are and, or, and not. So these are the three operators. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the code and see how this works. So we're gonna be using numbers and Booleans now. All right, now we're back to our REPL and now we are going to play around with these operators. We've already seen these arithmetic operators, right? They're quite um, self-explanatory. You know, six divided by three, th three multiplied by that, four modulo two, right? So we know we, we have that. But then we also learned about comparison operators. Like is four bigger than five? It should be false. It's false. But what if you have this or this? What is it gonna get us? It's gonna give us 
Oops, so I made an error. It says invalid syntax. So maybe it's not the right operator. Let's try something else. Okay, so now this or that, and then it's gonna give me true. Why did it give me true? Because like the language says, it becomes true if one of them is true, right? So four is bigger than five, that's not true, but three smaller than four, that is true. So what essentially happened was false or true. And then because of that, it becomes true. What if, if, if it was an and? If it was and, it would say false because for and, you need all of them to be true, right? So it's only when these two are true. So what happens if I do not? What does what does not do? It actually just does the the opposite. Like imagine if it were going to be true and then it's just going to be the opposite and it's gonna turn false. So those are the operators for Booleans and they're gonna be really, really powerful when we talk about control flow. You know, how does a computer decide what to do? Well, you give it rules you say stuff like, if four is bigger than two, or, or like you say, if your age is bigger than 18, you can go to the casino if uh, if your age is uh, smaller than 18, then you cannot go. Like programs do that. And then you're gonna be using these Booleans to determine which code path you want to go. We'll talk more about that in the next course. Now let's talk about strings. So for strings, what strings are, are anything that are between double quotes or single quotes, like hello, you know, or sup, right? Let's look back at our other page. As you can see, we got hello, three. So this might be confusing. You might think, oh, this is, um, this is definitely a number. Yes, it's a number, but because there are quotes around it, it's actually a string. So if you do like quotes three and then you add like four, it's not gonna give you seven. It's actually gonna give you the string. So soccer, Python, right? This is a single quote. We're just gonna learn about one operator for now because we're just learning the most um, common ones. For now, let's learn about the plus. What would happen if you do hello plus sup together? If you don't know, why don't we just try it out? So we want it to add hello plus sup. What would that give us? Huh, so it seems like it just concatenates the string. Concatenating means just st sticking the strings together, right? You can try this. Maybe double quotes this time. So one of them is double quote, one of them is single quote. Does it matter? It doesn't matter. There are nuances between those two, but we're not gonna cover that for now. So as you can see, what if we wanna add a string, like uh, hello, to a number? Does that work? No, it doesn't. Because you can't concatenate a string with an int, right? You use, This operation is only for strings. So, okay, what about four plus four? It doesn't work because the first one is a string and the second four is actually a number. So what would happen if you add three plus four? Is it seven? No, it's not. It's gonna be 34 because it's literally just characters. They don't represent it as numbers here. So those are strings. Now you might be wondering why is it called string? Well, it's actually quite simple. Uh, it's a string of characters or string of symbols. So technically a string is just a bunch of character like A plus G four A. Like these are three characters and they're strung together into a string, right? Like let's give it a variable name, my string, right? You can call it whatever you want because these are variable names. And then if you output my string, what would it give you? G four A. Yeah. Now strings are pretty important because um, they're here to display data that uses text or symbol, like uh, printing our name to the screen, which allows us to create text on our program. It's useful because it's human readable. We are humans. We don't just look at numbers. We look at text. We have languages. So for example, on a website, the words you see are part of a string. So this is what you can do with strings. There's actually a lot of other things you can do. Um, I'm just gonna give you a little hint now right? You, you're not going to learn this uh, right here, but you could see that it does something. Now, if you're curious, you can always look around. You're going to eventually learn this in my course, but I just want to tell you that the way I want you guys to learn, you are free to check other things on the internet and what else you can do because the process of programming and software engineering does not limit to what we teach you. Usually when you learn one thing, you don't learn every possibility. That's not the point of programming. You learn about what is possible and the fundamentals and then everything else, you can just search for it. 
a good software engineer knows how to search well on the internet. Like for example, if I want to know how do I subtract a string from another string, you can just Google subtract string from another string Python. I might not know on the top of my head, but that doesn't matter. It's the fact that I know that an answer exists that I can look at. There's no shame in looking on the internet. There's no shame on using Stack Overflow. We have these resources for a reason. This is why we can work very fast. So you can make sure that whenever you go on Stack Overflow or you read about a tutorial, read it thoroughly and understand what they're saying and if it's the same problem for you. So you can see here what they do is that they see if the string is inside this string and then they're gonna replace it by nothing. And then you're gonna be like, wait, what is this command? Or what is this command, replace? I've never seen that, that before. Well, then you can say Python string replace, what is it? And then there you go. There's like a bunch of resources that tells you what to do. I want you guys to keep in mind that you can search things and I actually encourage you guys to search things and learn beyond the course because that way you learn how to learn by yourself. That is the whole point of uh, teaching you fundamentals is to give you tools to do more than what you're taught. So now you know how to manipulate strings and numbers and booleans. So remember, there's a lot of things you can do and let's try a simple thing right now. Like what do you think would happen if I print a string and then you add like a number and then another string. Do you think that would work given what we did before? No, because like I said, this uh, the four is an integer, it's not a string. I'm gonna teach you a little something, a little something funky. It's called str, it's short for string. It's going to turn int into a string, right? And then now it works. It's hedgeo string of four ASDF, beautiful. So this, what it does is you could take in a number and what it's gonna do is gonna turn it into a string so that you can actually concatenate it. Now, one more thing I wanna teach you is a command called type. Now, as you can see, every time I use these functions, I always write the name of the function and then I do open parentheses and close parentheses. That indicates that it's a function, right? So as you can see, it's not about what the name is, it's about like how you call it. Print is also a function that just prints whatever is inside, prints the string, and then type, what it does is it tells you what kind of type it is. So if I put three, it's gonna tell you it's an integer. If I do three with, oops, if I do three with quotes, it's gonna say it's a string, str means string. If I do type uh, true, which is a Boolean, it's gonna say it's a Boolean. Those are the three that you should know for now. One thing you can do if you're never sure, for example, if you do a equals hello, and then a equals hello, but you're not completely sure what the type is, oh, just write type, open parentheses, your variable name, and then it's gonna say it's a string. So this will become very useful on the quiz that you'll do. All right, and that's it for the class, and see you in the next one.